Python Pals, I'm Professor John Gallagher, and in this video we're going to install the magnificent and well-supported Circuit Python programming language on a Raspberry Pi. Let's build! Now this video is part of my full physical computing course for absolute newbies that I teach at my university. We'll begin on a Circuit Playground Bluefruit, we'll migrate to the Arduino Nano RP2040 Connect, but I also show you how you can use other boards as well, and along the way we'll learn to flash and animate NeoPixels, work with a cornucopia of sensors and motors, all while learning how to code in Python. We finish the course with the Raspberry Pi. My course uses the Raspberry Pi 3A+, and we choose this board because it's relatively inexpensive but powerful and has Wi-Fi, and most importantly has an audio jack, which the Pi 0W and W2 boards don't have. If you want to use audio on any of the Pi 0 boards, you can do this, but you have to add some additional hardware and perform some configuration. So for the extra 10 bucks, I think the 3A+, is a better choice. Other than that, Anything that we cover in this series should work on just about every Raspberry Pi. And throughout the course, the powerful but easy to use CircuitPython programming language is our language of choice, unifying concepts and enabling making across all of these boards. If you want to go back and check out this content, here are some links to my channel and some key playlists. Now the Raspberry Pi out of the box doesn't know how to work with sensors and motors, CircuitPython extends the Python language to do this, and it offers a host of additional software libraries that we can install whenever we need new capabilities. Now if you've followed our earlier tutorial in this series, we're going to assume that you've already configured your Raspberry Pi and that you have it set up on your Wi-Fi network. If not, you can go back and begin with those videos if you need to. Now just to show you the steps that we're going to perform, I'm working on a Mac so I'm going to log into my Pi using the terminal program. If you're using Windows, you're probably going to use a tool like Putty and we'll install or upgrade the PIP3 utility, which is a tool for installing and upgrading software. We'll also install or upgrade the setup tools. We'll run scripts to install the Blinka utility that runs CircuitPython on the Raspberry Pi. The Pi will reboot, and then we'll enter commands in a simple Python program to test that everything is working properly. Now I'm on a Mac, so I'm going to run the Mac's terminal program. First I'll open Spotlight with Command Spacebar, then in this box type in Terminal, press Return, and the terminal program runs. Then I'll press Shift Command Plus a few times to increase the font size. Windows user, you want to install and run PuTTY, P-U-T-T-Y. Then I'll log into my Pi by typing this command at the prompt, ssh pi at my host name, which for my Pi is built with Prof G, make sure you enter your host name. And most users, including those users working on home Wi-Fi networks, will enter dot local at the end and press return. But for my students working on the Boston College Wi-Fi network, don't add dot local at the end, just press return. Then you'll be asked to enter your Pi's password. And if you did that right, you're in. Now I've written a guide to accompany this video. There's a link to it in the description under the video, but actually I suggest that you start by visiting Adafruit's guide just in case they've made any updates on how you should install CircuitPython. So if you search for installing CircuitPython on a Raspberry Pi, you'll find Adafruit's page on this topic, and we can complete these steps one at a time. Now if you came from a fresh install, which many of you have completed in the earlier video, then we don't need to do a sudo apt-get update and sudo apt-get upgrade. If you haven't used this Pi in a while, then go ahead and perform those steps. I just did that in the last video, and if you did that too, then we can skip over these two commands and copy this command, sudo apt-get install python3-pip, return to the terminal, paste this in and press return, and if you're asked to approve anything, just say yes. PIP is a program that installs packages over the internet. The name is recursive, it stands for PIP installs Python, and PIP3 is the version that works with Python 3. Now return to the browser. We also need to install setup tools, which is also used to install software packages. So I'll highlight this line, sudo PIP3 install space dash dash upgrade space setup tools. Again, it's best to copy this because you wanna make sure that you get the spelling and character spacing correct. Then return to the browser paste it in at the prompt, and press return. And it might look like your Pi is hanging, but just wait a few more seconds, and you should see the installation start to progress as text scrolls by. This might take a few minutes. Your output likely looks different from mine since I've already installed setup tools on this Pi, but after a few minutes, you should see a message saying you successfully installed setup tools, and you'll be returned to the prompt. Next, return to the browser. Adafruit has five lines of commands that will run scripts to perform the install of Blinka. Now, Blinka is the software layer that lets CircuitPython execute on the Raspberry Pi. It's named after CircuitPython's mascot, Blinka the Purple Python. So I'm going to click copy text in the upper right-hand corner of this box, and it says the text has been copied, then I'll return to the browser, paste in that text, press return, and again, the Pi might seem as if it's stalled, but it hasn't, just be patient, and things should get moving again. And this may also take a few minutes, but hopefully your installation will work. 
Now, my installation did not work. I performed this install the week after Raspberry Pi Bullseye was released, and apparently there was a conflict with the new base install of Raspberry Pi where a key software package was not upgraded properly, and that prevented Blinka from installing. And this happened even though we followed Adafruit's instructions. This sometimes happens. Hopefully your install worked fine. Now, if you didn't get this error, you can move ahead in the video, but our solution for the folks that did get this error is to run a command that will perform a more thorough upgrade of software on our Pi. And since that's not a bad thing to do, I'm gonna suggest that everybody watching this video enter a command I'm about to show, even if you didn't get errors. So if things worked out for you, your computer may be asking if you want to reboot. And if you're seeing a message asking you to reboot, then press Y and press return. Your Pi should be rebooted in about 30 seconds. Then go ahead and use the SSH command to log back into your Pi and I'll tell you which commands to enter. But if you have this error, fear not. I've got information in the guide that I mentioned earlier on how to make things right. And when we solve this problem, we'll also learn how to do a more complete install and upgrade of our Pi software. So for our friends who just rebooted, then SSH then logged in, as well as those with the error, open a browser and head to this page, bit.ly circuitpython dash on dash pi. And we'll scroll down to this area that says, note if the script above doesn't work. Now for everyone, even if you didn't get the error, copy this command, sudo apt full dash upgrade. Now full dash upgrade is similar to the upgrade that we did before, but if needed, this command will actually remove any packages to make an upgrade happen. Now sometimes you want to be careful when removing existing software packages that can be dangerous but since we're just getting started and the errant installation is causing us problems sudo apt full dash upgrade is just what we want so with this command copied head back to the terminal paste it in at the prompt and press return and i'm going to speed up the video but on my pi this took about six minutes to complete so when yours is done, head back to the browser, then this next item is a good command to perform from time to time, sudo apt clean. It just cleans out any extra, now redundant packages that were part of the installation or that we don't need anymore. So with this copied, return to the browser, paste it in, press return, and we're good. Next, only for those who got the error, highlight these five lines. Now they're the same lines that caused the problems earlier, but with these lines copied, return to the terminal and paste them in at the prompt, then press return. And we should see after a few minutes that the Blink installation is successful. And by the way, even if you didn't get the error, if you pasted this in again, nothing bad would happen. Your Pi would just try to reinstall software it already has, but it wouldn't give you double copies or anything like that. And as I mentioned, this might look like it's hanging, but it's not. Just wait a few more seconds and you'll see the installation start to progress. I'll speed up the video. It took about seven minutes on my Pi. Now, once we get at the prompt, hopefully nobody has any more errors. And I'll show you another thing. This isn't vital. Nothing bad is going to happen if you don't do this. But we do have some extra software on our Pi after this installation. In fact, if you read through some of the things that were scrolling by when the install was happening, you can see that in a few locations, the output says the following package was automatically installed and is no longer required. Use sudo apt auto remove to remove it. So I'm going to highlight that command, sudo apt auto remove, copy it, scroll back down to the prompt. I'm going to press no here so that I don't reboot yet. And then at the prompt, I'm going to paste this command in that I just copied. For folks that didn't get the error, you can actually type the command in. So it's sudo space apt space auto remove, all one word, then press return. You might be asked to approve things by typing in yes, it's totally okay to do that and you should. And this command is going to perform a bit of extra cleanup on the Pi. It's not super vital to do this, but it's nice to do. This might take a minute or two. And for those who did have the error, you haven't rebooted yet. So you want to type in at the prompt sudo sudo space reboot and press return and your Pi will be rebooted in about 30 seconds. Now, unfortunately, it's not going to return to the prompt. So you could close the terminal window and and then open up a new terminal window and log in. Or after about 30 seconds, I'm just gonna type control C and that breaks me from hanging at the prompt. I'm returned to the max prompt, but I'm gonna go ahead and SSH to log back into my Pi. I'm gonna press the up arrow to have the terminal enter this automatically for me. That's SSH Pi at hostname.local. Remember for my students that are on the Boston College campus, don't put .local at the end. Press return, enter your password, and now we should all be back at the prompt. And so now let's test everything out and make sure everything is working properly. So let's head back to the browser. We'll scroll down to this command here, ls dev slash i squared c slash dev slash spi. This is just gonna verify that we properly installed files that we need for i squared c and spy. Copy that, return to the terminal, paste it in and press return. And if the installation is successful, you should see something like this. 
And just to show you if it was not successful, back in the browser, you should see something like this, which says no such file or directory. And if you got that, something went wrong, you can try a reinstall or seek help on the Adafruit forums. But hopefully this worked out for you. And finally, what we're going to do is we're going to enter a test program called blinkatest.py. So what we're going to do is we're going to enter that into Nano. That's the text-based word processor program we'd mentioned in an earlier video. And we can use that within the terminal. So what we do is we highlight this command here to create our file in Nano. Nano blinkatest.py. We'll copy that, return to the terminal prompt, paste it in, press return. And we get a blank screen in Nano. But this is going to create the blinkatest.py program. Then we head back to the browser. We highlight this block of code from import board all the way through print done, copy it, return to the terminal, paste this into nano, looking good. Now let's exit nano and save this code. So type control X, then press Y, then press the return key, and we're back at the prompt. Now to run this program, what we're gonna type at the prompt is python3 space blinkatest.py. Now something to note, unlike microcontrollers, code doesn't execute automatically on the Raspberry Pi whenever it's saved. Also, we don't need to name our program code.py. So to run a program, we enter python3, a space, then the name of the program to run. Now that runs the code using the python3 program, and we don't have a serial console in the Raspberry Pi either, but we will see the output printed out in the terminal. So press return, and that's what we see. All these okay messages indicating that everything worked fine. If you've got this, congratulations, you have CircuitPython installed on your Raspberry Pi. So you can now shut down your Pi with sudo halt, that's S-U-D-O space halt. And after about five seconds, you can unplug your Pi. Now we're ready to start coding in the next video using CircuitPython on the Pi. Very exciting. If you like this, give me a thumbs up, let me know in the comments, and prepare for more goodness.